one of the most fulfilling parts about Reliquaries is that this was really an art project. And this was a chance to really let our artists push the boundaries and make some bold decisions. And the only mandatory was it needed to look cool. I like horror stuff. I like cosmic horror, abomination, creepy looking stuff. The creepier, darker, weirder side of things has always been something that really interested me and inspired me. The biggest thing I'm looking forward to is I'm doing the evil grouping. Here's the thing, I'm, I'm a huge scaredy cat, but uh, over this whole crazy pandemic, I've been getting really into horror stuff just to feel something. I'm most excited and just as a sculptor to, to get to explore different styles. I was doing demonic hellscape inspired designs Nate had the idea that we could go in a, a bit of a different direction with this Kickstarter and that it was an opportunity to try some things that we've wanted to do but haven't really wanted to base an entire Kickstarter around. I really like to push the team to explore a whole bunch of options. There's a freedom in just sort of wandering, exploring, and casting a really wide net and seeing where something really exciting is waiting. With the drawings I did after that, they went in sort of a cosmic horror, but with a celestial spin. Celestial things have always seemed otherworldly. Something that you look at and it's just, you don't understand it. And maybe this is based on the idea of biblically accurate angels. After I showed that round to Nate, Nate was like, go darker. And then I had the idea of what if the beauty of the celestial stuff was sort of being consumed and corrupted. If you look at these pieces, you can see the inspiration of sort of the Cthulian mythos with the, with the tentacles and the body horror. I've been really interested lately in how we make little models genuinely scary. For Eldritch, it was kind of an interesting journey because I started with pestilence look with a lot of green and, and sort of sickly stuff going on. And then I showed it to Nina, who suggested leaning in the color blue, and we started talking about the radiant fallen angel aspect of it. So it kind of became a little more beautiful, but still grotesque looking, which I like a lot. For those that know Warhammer Chaos, I kind of went from Nurgle to Zinch in my head. The Gibbering Grasper came out of my love of body horror type stuff. It's definitely inspired by a creature like the one from The Thing. It's also got the Cthulian tentacles going on on the bottom of it. Trying to learn from mistakes with pieces that sent me into symmetry madness. I incorporated some digital sculpting. The process of putting the digital together with the clay and some green stuff is sort of a new process. So for this one, this has to have the indicating point. We're trying to decide if it works with the paint or if possibly we will change the sculpt to make it a little more obvious because I'm not sure if it's a little too kind of out of the blue and garish right there how it is, if it doesn't look organic enough. Is it a, a paint job or a sculpt job to make sure that this is indicating all of your cool abilities and, and stats and that kind of thing? The Writhing Monument was based on a series of um, concept art pieces done by Felipe, which all featured ancient, strange artifact or monument out of which weird, eldritch creature parts were writhing and boiling and squirming out. Ultimately, the one uh, we settled on was a broken tower almost. We didn't want it too static or tightly twisted. We wanted a sense of it to be alive, so I kept some wrapped in real tight, like they were grabbing it, crushing it, and had others that lifted away further to give it a real sense of movement and so the twists and counter twists made an interesting uh, form whichever way you look at it. One of the details I like best about this is the sort of sense of schizophrenia where an incomprehensible being searching about in the world for things that can contain it and it likes tentacles because they're grasping power and insinuating creepiness. Each one that it creates sort of seizes on a different reflection of some creature in the world and each one has a distinct personality and was really fun trying to make some have mouths on them with with lolling tongues and there's one kind of like a face hugger like spider and there's another one that has suckers but instead of like octopus suckers they're each tiny leech mouths as if the thing that is sending these forth is completely mad but they're all creating the same kind of sense of mindless horror at first i didn't have anything done on the runes here and making them glowy and blue adds a really nice accent and makes them look really cool and magical so that was a great adjustment. At first it was just the gray stone and the cool tentacles, but that really elevates it, adds another color and another point of interest. And I, I like how it turned out. 
the angels that are depicted in a lot of art where it's just a guy with wings. It's not always what angels were described as. And I thought that always the more interesting idea is the sort of weird alien, but still beautiful, but like in a, in a way that you are kind of makes you uncomfortable. The winged horror has its own agenda. <laughs> I don't know if it's a friend or a foe. I think that it depends on what your goals are, whether they align with the winged horror or not. But I think it's like an inherently chaotic force that is incomprehensible. When I first started, all I had was one wing. It didn't even have the tentacles on it. So to get all of this and to see more of like the entirety of the creature or whatever is on there was a kind of cool to add to the story and the spikes because there's this nice elegance up here and then it gets really sort of bestial down here the sort of sickliness of it consumed more of the wing. So we knew it was a, a fallen angel sort of radiant being, but there was only a little bit of the old angelic feathers up here. But we decided to lean more into seeing some of the radiance and I think that really makes it pop. I, I kind of imagine that it's something like larger and only a small part of it, just the tip of the iceberg is uh, poking out and consuming uh, these structures and even more nightmarish parts of it exist beneath. If the winged horror could imbue dice with power, I think it would give them a sort of chaos magic. You may roll it, it might turn into a potato, it might turn into like a squirrel and run out the window, it could explode and burn a hole through your table. It could just give you a number. You just don't really know what it's gonna do.